Hi and welcome to Function Machines. Just before we start, a quick reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so just a quick introduction as to what a function machine actually is. Um, a function machine is a set of processes where we start with an input, a number that we are going to put into a, uh, into a function machine. It goes through a couple of processes, so in this case it's going through times two and then adding on three and it produces an output. So we start with a number going in, it goes through the two different processes, and then we come to an output. And so what we're going to look for here are the outputs when we have an input of three, of five, and of negative one. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one step at a time. So if I have three, and as the arrow says, I multiply by two, well, three times two is six. If I continue that, Instead, uh, the next step is that I want to add 3 on, and so 6 plus 3 is 9. And so my output for this function machine is 9. If I do the same for 5, well, the first thing I want to do to that is multiply it by 2. 5 times 2 is 10. If we continue, the next step is that I want to add 3, and so 10 plus 3 is 13. Finally, if I have a negative number, so I've got negative 1, and it tells me that I want to multiply it by 2, well, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Then I want to add 3, well, negative 2 plus 3, well, that is positive 1. So we have found the outputs for the, uh, for the inputs. We'll try it with a different uh, function machine. This time, our first uh, step is to add 5, and then we times 3. And so we're going to do it in exactly the same way. I'm going to begin with my input of 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. And then multiply it by 3. Well, 8 times 3, that is 24. If I begin with the number 5, the first thing I'm doing is adding 5. So 5 plus 5 is 10. And then I multiply by 3. 10 times 3 is 30. And lastly, if I look at negative 1, the first thing I've been asked to do is add 5 on. So negative 1 plus 5 is 4. And then I want to multiply by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. Now in the next situation, um, we've been given a function machine. So our inputs go through the process of being multiplied by 3 and then taking away 2. And that produces the output. But in this case, that is where we're actually starting. We've been told what the input, uh, what the output is. What we are trying to work out is what the input was. And so because we are trying to work backwards from an output to the input, we actually also need to work backwards through these arrows. So the arrows in our function machine, we need to work backwards. And because we are working backwards, we are reversing the operation. And so instead of in the f uh, in the second arrow being uh, take away two, it's actually going to now become plus two because we need to undo that process. So we're going to start at four and add two, which will give us six. In the next arrow, it says multiply by three. Well, the opposite operation would be dividing by three. So six divided by three is two. If we try that again with an output of 10, well, 10, we are going to have to add two. So that gives me 12. And then instead of multiplying by three, I will divide by three. 12 divided by three is four. And finally, if the output was negative five, well, I'm going to have to add two instead of taking away two. So negative five plus two is negative three. And then instead of multiplying by three, I'm going to divide by three. So negative three divided by three, well, that is negative one. Let's try it again for the function machine, divide by two, add four. Now again, we've been given the output, so we need to work backwards. So in this case, instead of adding four, I'm going to subtract four. So two, take away four, that is negative two. And then instead of dividing by two, I'm going to multiply by two. So negative two times two is negative four. In the next one, 
if my output is 1, well, the first thing I want to do is to subtract 4. So 1 take away 4 is negative 3. Instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. So negative 3 times 2, well, that is negative 6. And in our last one, we have got negative 2 as our output. So we're going to subtract 4 here. Negative 2 take away 4, well, that is negative 6. And instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Now, at each of these cases, if you just want to check that those answers definitely are correct, you can try putting those in as the input and see what you would get. And so, if we try negative 4 as our input, the first thing I was asked to do was divide it by 2. Well, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And then I was asked to add 4. Well, negative 2 add 4 is 2. That is the output that we were given, and therefore our input is correct. And our last set of questions, we're actually going to try to find a missing um, part of the function machine. So what is the element which is currently missing? Now, it must work for all three pairs of inputs and outputs. And the key here is deciding how we would work out what is going to happen in between. Well, in this case, because we've missed the first value, what we really need to think about is what must have been in the gap in between. So the in-between stage here, what are the gaps? And so if I work backwards, we've been told that the last process was add 2. And so I need to do the opposite. I need to subtract 2. So 8 take away 2 is 6. So my question is, how could I get from 2 to 6? Well, to get from 2 to 6, it would be plus 4, possibly. Or it could be a multiplication, a multiply by 3. Now, at this point, I'm not going to be able to be sure until I check the other values. And so, in the next one, I have an output of 5. I'm going to take away 2. And so, I have 3. So, is there something which is common between turning 2 into 6 and 1 into 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. So, it seems to work for those two. So, let's just have a little look. If we do the very last one, take away 2 here. So negative 4, take away 2, that would be negative 6. If I multiply negative 2 by 3, what do I get? Well, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. It has worked for all of these values, and therefore my first part of this function machine must have been times 3. Let's try it here with another set of inputs and a set of outputs and trying to find out what the missing function is. And so in our first case, we have 6 and we had take away 3. And so 6 take away 3 is 3. How do I then get to 12? Well, again, we've got a few different options. I could add 9. That would get me to 12. Or I could multiply by 4. That would also get me to 12. Let's see in the next section. So 12 take away 3. Well, that would be 9. How do I get from 9 to 36? Well, in this case, it would have to be either adding 27 or multiplying by 4. We suggested that multiply by 4 worked at the top. So let's see if it works in the final version. So 1 take away 3. Well, that's negative 2. How do I get from negative 2 to negative 8? Well, that is multiply by 4. And so the same uh, function has worked in every case, and therefore we have times 4. And so we end with the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in November 2018, and it was foundation paper 2. Um, and it says here is a number machine, another word for a function machine. And it tells us the input, and then it goes through the process of multiply 5, and then subtract 2, and we get our output. So in the first question, we're asked to work out the output when the input is 8. And so what that is telling us is place 8 into the machine and see what happens. So 8 is multiplied by 5. Well, 8 times 5 is 40. And then it goes through the next process of subtracting 2. 40 take away 2. Well, that is 38. So our output would be 38. In the second part of the question, we're asked to work out the input when the output is 28. And so in this case, this is one of the ones where we need to work backwards because we've been told the output 
of 28, we need to get back to what we put in. And so we need to reverse each of the operations. So instead of taking away two, I'm going to add two. So 28 plus two is 30. And then instead of multiplying by five, I have to reverse that operation. And so I need to divide by five. 30 divided by five, well, that is six. And so my input is six.